Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Take Lookers to Bookers. Thank you for joining us today. I want to go ahead and get things started by introducing our speakers. First is Rose Serrato. She is the Enterprise Business Development Manager at SkyTouch Technology. As SkyTouch Technology's Enterprise Business Development Manager, Rose brings over 30 years of widely varied travel experience. She is an innovative travel industry entrepreneur who has been named one of the most powerful women in travel for her award-winning marketing and sales programs with travel destinations and suppliers. Rose is an accomplished global travel industry executive, connecting digital sales, marketing, and technology solutions to the travel and hospitality industry. She's created marketing programs with Tahiti Tourism, Modern Bride Magazine, Disney, Trafalgar Tours, and endless cruise lines, including luxury lines like Regent Seven Seas, Windstar, Silver Sea, and Seaborn. Her travel digital media expertise also includes taking lookers to bookers with the likes of MGM Grand Hotels, Cathaway Pacific Airlines, Starwood Hotels, Mexico Tourism, and other high-profile clients. Thank you for joining us today, Rose. Um, and second, I want to introduce um, William Dara from TravelClick. Um, William is the, the Vice President of Reservation Solutions at TravelClick, an Amadeus company with over 12 years of experience in delivering exceptional revenue results and high levels of customer satisfaction. In his tenure at TravelClick, he has held senior roles in sales and e-commerce, driving double-digit growth that has led to company sales, first to uh, Tom Abravo in 2014 and then to Amadeus in 2018. Today, Will oversees North America's sales and specialist organization, and he's focused on providing an industry-leading CRS solution to independent hotels. Will is a graduate of the University of Delaware Hotel and Tourism School and currently resides in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now, today, I want to go ahead and introduce what topics we're going to be covering. First, we're going to discuss the challenge of driving direct bookings. Then we're going to discuss the common levers that influence booking performance. Third, we're going to talk about taking control of the booking experience. Uh, and fourth, we're going to talk about how we can successfully convert lookers into bookers. We'll go ahead and summarize today's key takeaways, and then we'll go ahead and enter a time of Q&A. Now, before we jump right in, I want to encourage everyone today to please go ahead and send us your questions via your chat window before we enter Q&A at the very end. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Well, why don't you go ahead and start to talk to us about um, the challenges of driving direct bookings. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, so the, the guest journey over time has changed. Uh, you know, I'm sure as you all think about your guest journey and what it was like five years ago to how you're trying to respond to the marketplace today, um, it really has changed on the guest journey front. Our digital consumers have 3.64 connected devices. They, they're exposed to 38,983 micro moments in a 60-day time frame in which they average 18 websites on multiple devices during eight sessions before making their hotel booking. Before it was, they shopped 22 websites across eight sessions, and now Google, as they really dig into more data, they realize that basically our customers now have significant ADD, and they need your help to kind of refocus their efforts on what they should do around a hotel booking. So the share of the mind around brand.com is becoming much more difficult, and that's why it's really important uh, to really focus on your media strategy, your website strategy, booking engine, CRM, PMS, and how all of those pieces are aligned to uh, drive more performance direct. Let's go to the next slide. So on the hotel front, so while the guest journey has really uh, accelerated over time, on the hotel front, our goal as hoteliers has remained constant. Drive more business through brand.com. It's my most profitable channel. It's at my lowest cost of acquisition. And so if you look at the consumer spend sort of across the top line, your hotel website is where you're gonna drive uh, the most profitability. So let's go, let's go to the next slide and look at some of the levers that are really going to, oh, actually, we're going to talk about conversions. So from a conversion standpoint, you know, I get asked this question a lot in meetings. You know, people ask, hey, well, what is the average conversion? What should I be shooting for? What do brand hotels get versus independent hotels? And the average conversion rate through brand.com for hotels overall as an industry is around 2.2%. 
And so I strongly urge you to look at your conversion rates and say, am I above or below that 2.2% uh, you know, threshold there? And so if we just break it down, 100 visitors make it to your booking engine, 42 people will actually go ahead and show interest to check rates, nine will actually find the rates that are appropriate for them when compiling the reservation, 7.5 will actually get to the shopping cart screen, and we'll talk about why that's important on the shopping cart screen. Uh, so now you're at a 7.5% potential conversion, and then the actual people who buy is about a 2.2%. Now brands, just as an FYI, they tend to get about a 3 to 4% conversion rate. You know, a lot has to do with the loyalty programs and 30 different brands and Marriott's collection and things like that. But so they do get a little bit of a higher conversion rate. But, you know, again, it really depends on your market, your price, and a number of these different levers that we're going to talk about in the coming slides. So let's look at some of the common variables. And so what we've done today and what Rose and I are going to talk to is really around, you know, breaking it down into different buckets and what you can proactively do as a hotelier to focus on, you know, one or two of these incremental things that will drive uh, conversion lift for your properties. So the first bucket is pricing. And so we'll talk more about this, but it's market pricing, making sure that you're set at the right price within your market. And the second piece is around rate parity, making sure that when you put a price into the marketplace that you don't undercut yourself on Expedia or booking and that brand.com always is either meeting the same price that you have out there or, uh, or maybe potentially lower in some cases to drive more business direct. Uh, the second piece is private offers, which we'll talk about that. That's really around when they come to your site, are they able to unlock a better deal? Having a flexible pricing engine, this is really looking at your PMS and your CRS and making sure that you have uh, the capabilities to match or keep up with the OTAs. You know, do the OTAs have potential pricing mechanisms that are different than your central reservation system? Uh, something to think about to make sure that you're in par uh, with what they can do and what you can do from a pricing flexibility standpoint. Once you change the price in a flexible pricing engine, the next one is really around cognitive display. So again, it goes back to that guest journey as the guest is searching on your media or in your website or in your booking engine. It's really around the visibility of that pricing promotion that you might have out in that marketplace. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about PMS, how you're able to leverage guest profiles, curated packages, having a seamless connection to the CRS, you know, this is one that's kind of uh, underestimated, making sure that availability rates and inventory and the, the flexibility of the PMS and how it's integrated to your CRS is really kind of, uh, you know, lock and step, uh, as well as referral programs. Next slide, we'll talk about your website. You know, what are some key things to, to be aware of in terms of your website is around consumer usability, you know, having that handhold experience from your website into your booking engine. Uh, the overall look and feel of the design, making sure it's user friendly, uh, videography and how video is changing the game in terms of, uh, you know, video optimizing your room types or video optimizing the experience that someone's going to be able to have at your property. And then catering to different personas, you know, really looking at your website and saying, you know, if I'm a full service hotel and I have a, a number of different restaurants and I have nightclubs and I have spa and I have golf, you know, are those all built out as separate pages and separate experiences? Are those lead generating into a booking engine? Uh, or if somebody just comes to my website, are they able to get to the booking engine and get to that product as quickly as possible? So again, we'll look at some of the different website items that are, are, are key levers to driving performance. Uh, from a booking engine standpoint, really focusing on a frictionless experience. I know we talk a lot about that word, but you certainly don't want the website into the booking engine to create friction and, and have uh, uh, distracting content between the two platforms. Really focusing on speed, uh, having a simplified view of rate plans and room types. You know, Southwest Airlines does a great job at this. They really minimize the amount of rate options, you know, the want to get away, the anytime or the business select, right? It's really kind of a dumbed down seamless model. And then simplified payments, you know, really being able to allow people to have multiple and flexible payment options, uh, but pay quickly. Uh, and then from a CRM perspective, we'll talk a little bit about ab abandonment. So while we have a 2.2% conversion rate, you know, what happens when 98% of your customers bounce off of your booking engine? How do you bring those people back? And so we'll talk about how to do that and what kind of tools are uh, you know, available today in terms of technology. Room upsell, how do you automate uh, the room upsell capabilities to be able to drive more revenue direct? 
loyalty and recognition, as well as personalization. So we're going to talk, touch on a lot of these themes today and kind of go a little bit deeper uh, and certainly we'll be able to take some questions at the end. Okay. So let's talk about price. So the next slide is really around private offers. You know, this was one of the enhancements that we invested in at TravelClick back at, uh, in late 2017. And this was really kind of the learnings that we found from Marriott and Hilton, being able to have sort of that stop clicking around, start buying direct campaign, as I'm sure many of you have seen those commercials. But the results speak for themselves here. When somebody's able to go to your website and get into the booking engine and unlock a better deal, whether it be a 5 or a 10% discount, you get 123% lift in conversion rates with people who are able to sign in and then see a lower rate uh, than, say, the OTA. Uh, now, you do have kind of competing brands in this space right here, right? You have Marriott and Hilton who are saying, hey, we're going to be able to offer a lower rate if somebody gives me their guest data and they want to be able to buy direct. You have some of the more limited service brands like Motel 6 and Red Roof Inn that are actually matching their private offer with the Expedias and bookings of the world because they have a relationship in which they want the OTAs to be able to share guest data with them. So again, it kind of depends on the strategy and approach, but you know, the OTAs do have uh, this functionality. The question is, is whether or not you have this functionality to be able to compete with the OTAs. Um, the other big piece here is 600 plus average monthly email addresses collected per property through private offers. So not only are you having a, a converting uh, uh, feature in place in which somebody can go to the booking engine, unlock a better deal to be able to buy, which will increase conversions, but secondarily, even if they don't buy and they're just unlocking a better deal, they have to type in their Facebook, Twitter, or email address, and that's really building a guest database for yourselves to be able to proactively market to these customers in the future to be able to bring that back, that customer direct. So there's, uh, this is a sort of a feature functionality marketing approach uh, that you know, is, a, is a great tool to drive conversions. The next piece is really around having a flexible pricing engine. And again, as you think about the OTAs and what their capabilities are and why some of these OTAs have expanded over time, if you think about Hotel Tonight, you know, when Hotel Tonight first came out, nobody ever thought it was going to gain traction and legs. Um, you know, they're going to have this green geo-based tag on the front end. It's going to be just same day, last minute, perishable inventory. And all the CRS companies and the OTA sat here and scratched their head. And I don't know, that, that'll never work. I don't think we'll ever pick up steam. What we picked up steam is Hotel Tonight was really first to having a mobile app that was on demand, that was user-friendly and frictionless, and stored your credit card information, and it did take off. And this is, and then Expedia tried to buy Hotel Tonight, and then they couldn't. And then they created Sell Tonight on Expedia.com, right, to be able to have a competing product. So if you can't beat them, you got to join them. And from a CRS perspective, you know, we have a flexible pricing engine at TravelClick that allows you to put in a last-minute sale lead time, have a radius, have it mobile-friendly only. And so, again, you're able to not just, well, I have to be on hotel tonight, and unfortunately on my own mobile site, I don't have that same flexibility, so I have to undercut myself on hotel tonight. You don't want to have to undercut yourself. You want to be, a, be able to be on par, that if you want to take part in a program that's on an OTA, you should be able to offer that same pricing flexibility direct. Next slide. And last but not least, you know, I know we just talked about a couple of the different pricing flexibility items, but this is really how it breaks down to cognitive display in terms of what the consumer sees in their guest journey. You know, when that guest is able to make that buying decision, are they aware that there's a sale tag, there's a flash sale going on, there's a countdown ticker, if I buy three nights, I get one night free, there's a geo-based tag, and it's highlighted in green, and it's on mobile devices. And so, again, a lot of what you see on the OTAs today, which are, you know, uh, alerts that are, uh, you know, uh, encouraging that guest to buy now, there's only five rooms left. Uh, again, all of these different pricing flexibility items are available within our Travel Quick platform. But again, you should evaluate your current CRS provider and say, hey, do I have the capability that when I do change my price, I'm also able to show on the front end to that consumer the value that that, that, that customer is going to get? Next slide. Perfect. So I'm going to turn it over to Rose, and she's going to talk about the PMS experience. Thanks, Will. Is personalizing your guest experience, why is this so important? 
Most brands today have become homogenized and they lose their uniqueness and ability to deliver that special service. Today, personalized experiences are shaping the hospitality industry now more than ever. And why is that? Customer experience is now number one of the main competitive advantages that companies strive to obtain over their competitors. Number two, because guest expectations have changed. People are now seeking out an experience that's memorable and special that they can share with their friends and family. With 62% of online adults have chosen, recommended, or paid more for a brand that provides a personal, personalized service or experience. It's more important now than ever for hotels to utilize every tool available. And this is going to include data, artificial intelligence to deliver on what guests want and are expecting. Set yourself apart from the competition. Dare to be different from your competitors. SkyTouch Technology has a guest experience program in their property management system. I'm not sure if you use one, but we have one. You need to surprise your guests and keep them coming back for repeated stays. Our program step will allow a hotel to build a customized program from the ground up that is going to recognize and reward frequent guests based on criteria that is very important to that property and its guests. The program will allow the ability to offer the guests a more exclusive set of experiences where the hotel may offer a choice from a selection of guests. In this case, the hotel guest is presented a check-in, a number of experience options, and may select one of the options. This could be items like a gas card, a Starbucks gift card, or a complimentary hotel amenity like a room upgrade, or even a golf or spa experience. And don't forget, if you've got a bar or restaurant for that very special guest. Hotel packages can really help your hotel differentiate itself from the competition. Boost your lifestyle marketing efforts and it can drive more revenue. You can promote your hotel packages on your website, social media, targeting email marketing, and push notifications to help drive those conversions. You can create your own guest experience or packages, and you're going to increase in incremental revenue, heighten bragging rights for your customers, and you're going to create that wow factor for repeated bookings. This is a perfect example of a property. It's the Pines Resort at Bass Lake, using hotel packages to drive incentive bookings. You can access a list of packages directly from their homepage. Once on the specials and package, you can find out what fits for you in your visit. This example is from for a romantic stay for two with a $50 dining gift card to a local restaurant, Ducey's on the Lake. Also, the Pines included a savings of 12% that the customer will receive if they book this incentive as opposed to without, even further increasing the likelihood of a guest to book right then and there. You know, some of the unique places that I've stayed at, they've offered guest experiences, unique packages. Um, I remember staying at one hotel. They gave each guest personalized local chocolates from a store down the street. Um, another example, each owner that rented a pet room got a treat bag and coupons from a local pet shop. And if you're in a unique area like Sonoma, why not partner with a local winery, have them provide a sample bottle of wine and with winery tour invites. You can have hotel upgrades and referral programs. Why not add a family and friends referral program and reward those loyal guests with your rewards? Don't have amenities? Let's get creative. Uh, create your packages, partnering with local retails. For this particular slide, Millwood Inn and Suites, it's a small boutique located in San Francisco. They've created their own packages for various visitor groups 
and took advantage of the local surroundings by partnering with tour operators in the area. Love that, it's very creative. Again, these packages help the hotel set itself apart from the rest and provide more incentive for direct bookings with their unique offers. You know, other examples on who you can work with, you can work with restaurants, breweries, distilleries, outdoor activities, day trips, shopping. I mean, I love shopping. I would go on a tour myself. Uh, day trips, museums, pet shops, spa, theme parks. You know, use your imagination and see if you can hook up with the local. Add a referral program and reward loyal guests. And you can convert lookers to bookers by coming up with these programs. Green Tree Hotels, for example, offers give back rewards, rewarding their loyal guests with hotel perks, savings on future bookings, cash back, vouchers. You can also give members to special rates to really amplify the wow factor that you want to create. And now I'm going to turn it over to Will, and he can talk about websites. Great. Thanks, Rose. So let's talk about some of the items that really drive conversion from sort of the front end of the user experience. Uh, and again, this might seem, well, Will, isn't this just, you know, doesn't everybody just do this naturally? And it's, well, no, you need to have a beautiful design, clear navigation. You should have lead rates that are linked between the booking engine as well as the website to be able to bring the customer frictionly, frictionless into the booking experience. Uh, videography, you know, this is a new one, being able to invest in a hero video, really create that experiential and that immersive experience for your guests. You know, sometimes when you look at a picture, and if, you, if you're an owner of the hotel and you look at a picture, you go, well, yeah, but there's a lot more to it than just that one picture. The owner sees a full experience, the video, you know, going out on the lake and in, boat, in a boat and things like that versus just uh, a static image. So, again, we'll talk a little bit about videography and what that's doing in terms of conversions. And then, as Rose talked about, really those special offers, if you, if you partner up with local purveyors of offers, being able to bring those offers to the website and bring it above the fold, make sure that it's prevalent for that guest to be able to see and that it's easy for them to buy. Next screen, uh, we'll talk about video. So video on the website, I think, it, again, this is one of those things where it's, you know, Will, I don't know if I have the money to invest in video this year or if I should do it next year. It's kind of like investing in mobile. You know, initially, a lot of people didn't invest in mobile. It's not in the budget this year. I don't think that there's going to be a lot of bookings through mobile yet. But eventually, yes, you're going to have to have a responsive website and a responsive booking engine that pertains to mobile. It's the same thing for video. It's the most, you know, travel is the most watched video on the Internet today. The question is not if you're going to invest in video. It's going to be when. And so it decreases your bounce rate by up to 30%. It increases your average time spent on the site by 20%, and overall increases your conversion rate by 13%. And there's a lot of different aspects around video. There is a hero video on your website. There is a branding video in which it could be, you know, one minute or a one minute and a half video that somebody can click on that could be hosted on Google. It could be hosted on YouTube. It could be hosted on one of TravelClick's platforms. And there's also in-room video. And so while you know, today in booking engines, you know, sometimes you have 360-degree tours or you have static images, really the next wave that's kind of shaping the in-room experience is being able to uh, have an in-room video be immersive within that booking experience. Next slide. And then last but not least, you know, again, this is just like one of those little things that, you know, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of is you should really be going back to your CRS and your PMS data, and you should be asking yourself, you know, what are the source markets? Who is my customer? What's the lead time that that customer is buying? What languages should I consider? You know, should I build out any new languages on my website page to be able to capitalize on a new source market? So again, really understanding your data and your analytics around who's booking you and how they're booking you and why they're booking you, and then being able to make strategic decisions within the PMS, within the CRS, to be able to build the right offers and promotions, and then being able to then carry that across to the website so that therefore you have an early booking button for people who book, say, 14 days in advance. It's really, again, allowing that customer to find the right offer at the right time and making it easy for them. Next slide. So now we're going to talk a little bit about booking engine best practices. 
So let's talk about sort of the overall industry. It's not just, you know, as we as it pertains to the hotel industry, but what have we learned, not just from the hospitality industry, but from all industries for that matter, in terms of driving conversions around e-commerce? Well, the first is, you know, we learned from Hotel Tonight, you should have geo-based rates. You know, interestingly enough, you know, probably about like 15% of hotels was kind of use, utilizing geo-based rates a couple of years ago, and that rate has significantly climbed over time to be able to offer the right, right rate to the right market at the right time and being able to have the front-end display being a geo-based rate. So, again, that's talking about that flexible pricing engine with the front-end display. You know, we learned from Airbnb that there's a new way that consumers want to be able to look at the product. So Expedia and Booking.com, you actually scroll up and scroll down to be able to see the product in a list view. Airbnb introduced a gallery view in which you could display the product next to each other. And again, your booking engine provider should be able to offer both ways to display your product. Iconography, American Airlines introduced this when they realized that nobody wanted to read in the booking engine experience anymore. And so they unlocked all these things that you should not bring on your plane. Well, we've done the same thing at TravelClick. We, we rolled out a 1,200 icon library in which if you don't want to sell it verbally through de long-winded descriptions, you can just add the icons that make the most sense for your rooms. Private deals, we talked about this one with Expedia, Kayak, Marriott, everybody allowing this private offer functionality that if somebody comes to your booking engine, you can unlock a better deal. Obviously, you know, that's something that you should consider as well as driving conversions. And then positive reinforcement. You know, this one was really around uh, Virgin America before they were bought by Alaska. But when you actually clicked in the main cabin, it said, great choice. Now you're in the main cabin. Perfect. Would you like six inches of more leg room? Awesome. How about that window seat? And so there was this natural conversational approach to upselling the customer throughout the booking experience. Again, this is something that we've adopted at TravelClick to be able to be much more conversational in the booking approach. Some of the other items that we've looked at in the industry as well, uh, we'll start with the top right, social tags. So Kayak actually wrote a white paper around tagging your hotels and tagging your room types. And when you tagged in a light green color and you said things like most popular, bestseller, perfect for families, when you tag uh, hotels or room types, people will click on that room type more than one that's not tagged. And it'll drive a 1% increase in conversion and a 1% increase in revenue toward that particular product. So again, do you have the ability to tag your room types and be able to say, you know, this is perfect for families or quaint and cozy, or this is our best seller. And it doesn't have to be like the lowest available room type, right? Potentially you pick the next room type up and you say, this is our best seller. It drives more eyeballs to that next available room type up and it gets more people to buy. And you should be able to, you know, trial and test that and see if that works on a monthly basis. Videography, we talked about that and being able to introduce videography into the booking experience. Um, just as a, a quick reference here, so we took a four and five star hotel in Newport Beach, California. Um, they wanted to really drive more awareness to their villas and their more expensive rated room types. Uh, just in year one, by rolling out in-room video for the more expensive room types, we saw a 23% lift in conversions uh, year over year in revenue for that uh, particular hotel. For hold seat and hold rate, we learned from the airlines, and as we kind of uh, layered this back to earlier on in the presentation, you know, out of those 100 customers, 7.5 made it to that payment processing step, but yet only 2.2% actually buy. The airlines also saw that most people are shopping, but they put things in their shopping cart, but then they bounce on the payment processing step. You know, you kind of get cold feet before you actually buy. And so the airlines made a decision to say, hey, we'll hold the seat and hold the rate. Give us your credit card information over for 24 hours. Hawaiian Airlines can hold it up to seven days. Uh, but now they're finding that people will actually give you the credit card information or they will give you their email address. And if they bounce, they will come back and buy at a conversion rate of 15%. So if you think about, you know, how many people you can bring back out of that 100, potentially you're bringing back now 15% of people from an abandonment situation. Lead rates, again, we talked about this, being able to push the rate from the CRS into the website, as well as into the booking engine earlier on in the process. You know, why have the customer go three steps into the booking process only to realize you're not available or they can't afford your property? So again, it's trying to get the rates in front of the customer faster. 
And then last but not least, flash sales. Again, that kind of pertains back to pricing and having a flexible pricing engine. Are you able to sort of set it and forget it? It's Cyber Monday. I want the rate going on my website at 9 a.m. I want it to be pulled off at 11.59 p.m. And I want to set it and forget it today so I don't have to be there and click on Monday at 9 a.m. that this promotion needs to go live. So it's being able to really be proactive in setting up all of your marketing communications, being able to set up your rates across all of your distribution platforms. Uh, and then really simplifying multi-property offers. You know, if you have multiple properties, being able to have area search, making it really easy for customers to be able to search your different properties and what amenities that they might have, being able to integrate to Google Maps so that therefore the customer can quickly and easily look on a map view or on a list view or on a multi-rate view or on a multi-property view. So a number of different ways to be able to work with multiple properties. And then if they search their dates and one property sold out, how do you have alternate hotel availability in which this property may be sold out, but then saying, hey, these other three properties are available. So again, all of these things from a searching and a filtering standpoint uh, is able to help the customer convert at a higher rate. And let's talk about CRM, because this is really kind of an evolving thing. We talk about personalization, we talk about recognition, we talk about loyalty. You know, there's a couple things going on here with the CRM. The first is, uh, and we've really unlocked greater conversion and revenue potential at TravelClick, so I'll talk specifically about what we can do, uh, and you can evaluate what you do at your properties. But the first is collecting clickstream data. And I'll talk about two bigger players, Amazon, Southwest Airlines. Uh, so Amazon owns the CRM, and they own the CRS. So do all of the airlines. And so when you actually go to Salt, call it Southwest Airlines and you type into my account on your website, and you search you know, Philadelphia to Fort Lauderdale and you don't buy, just wait about an hour. You'll get an email from Southwest CRM uh, platform that says, hey, Will, you still want to take that trip to Fort Lauderdale? Right? Because it owns both pieces. What they're actually doing is they're collecting all of your clicks. They're collecting the dates that you selected. We're collecting the room types that you selected. We're collecting whether or not you selected an enhancement or you selected and then deselected the enhancement. We're collecting all of that data in the, C in the booking engine, and we actually send it to the CRM and store it. And then you can set up automated messages that then go after that customer and try to get them to either buy more, or if they abandon, it becomes the engine of abandonment to bring that customer back into a personalized experience specifically to what they clicked on. And so this is, kind of, this is gonna become much more powerful as time goes on, but you can see on the far right-hand side, just an example of what that cart abandonment email looks like. It has an image, it has your descriptive content, it has the room type that most likely that customer will buy and a clear book now button. So again, this is sort of cart abandonment with clickstream data. In the middle is called campaign advisor. And again, this used to be sort of an email marketing function in which, hey, you would go to an email marketing provider, you would build an email marketing campaign, and then you would send it out, right? Well, Campaign Advisor is not just around shotgunning an email marketing campaign out, but again, it goes back specifically a personalized approach for that, that unique customer. We know who the customer is. We know their address. We know their zip code. We know that they wake up on the West Coast three hours behind the East Coast, right? So Campaign Advisor is really around sending the right offer to the right guests at the right time and not having it just be a spray and pray shotgun approach to email marketing campaign. But throughout the day, customers are receiving information as to when they're most likely to buy. And so, again, this is something that's driving conversions for our hotels as well. Uh, room upgrade in the bottom left-hand corner. This is something in which our CRM is either integrated to the property management system or it's integrated into iHotelier in which we're actually able to read your live suite inventory days in advance. And you're able to set up rules that say, hey, Will, if I have two suites available two days from now, I want to have an automated rules-based engine that sends out this specific email marketing campaign to everybody who's in this standard room type. And I want them to be able to have the first right to kind of upgrade themselves into these suites. And that's what we do. So you could say, hey, three days before arrival, read our live suite inventory, and then send out this specific email marketing campaign to lock in people who are in those suites. And then also, in addition, automate releasing those standard rooms back into inventory. And again, you know, as 
There's more for us to do, and technology hopefully makes things a little bit easier. Creating these automated tools and solutions to drive more revenue for your hotels is what we're is what our you know our mission is over here. And the last, I know we talked a little bit, you know, Rose talked a little bit about reward and redeem, uh, creating loyalty programs and personalized offers. Again, that's something we do, too, between our CRM and our CRS is the ability to build a loyalty program, being able to have the person redeem with points and cash, uh, being able to offer unique, you know, call it room upgrades or enhancements to specific loyalty customers based off of their tier, or even if somebody goes to the website and, you know, they log into their account and they're a gold member and gold members get 10% off your rates and platinum members get 15% off, off your rates. With our flexible pricing engine, you can actually set up tiers for your customers uh, and have, you know, have those capabilities that that customer is able to get to the right offer that's available for them. I think now I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. Thank you, Will. Okay, so what have we learned today? What are the key takeaways? Well, first, um, you want to guarantee the best offer on your direct channels by offering member-only rates and ensuring promotion parity. Second, you want to orient your website experience to drive users to your booking engine. Third, you want to engage guests and create a sense of urgency on your booking engine to drive higher conversions. Fourth, you need to dare to be different and create that personal touch for your hotel guests. Fifth, you want to make sure that you're delivering personalized customer experiences um, because that's one of the main competitive advantages for most brands today. And finally, you want to drive revenue and increase bookings through unique marketing efforts and creating creative hotel packages or referral programs. Now, it's our favorite time of any webinar that we do, and it's, it's that time for Q&A. Um, Please, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and submit those into the chat window. We've already have a couple, um, so I'm going to pose these questions to both um, you, Rose, and Will. Um, our first one that we received is, how can you drive direct bookings through word of mouth? Rose? Okay. You know, one of the things that I see, especially on Facebook, when anybody goes anywhere, they post where they're at and pictures. You know, again, everybody loves bragging rights and they tell all their friends and it's all over Facebook. Remember that friends and referral program is print something like that on a business card um, or on their guest folio that you have that program so that particular guest can be rewarded. Again, try to get creative with word of mouth bookings as well. What about you, Will? Yeah, I would, I would definitely say, you know, uh, with friends and family programs, you know, it's all about social media in this element. Uh, you know, I think Twitter is probably sort of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, channel or opportunity here in which you can blast out specific offers at specific times of the day. You know, follow us on Twitter to be able to, you know, receive special promotions and offers. So, um, you know, definitely uh, being able to set up those referral IDs but I think more importantly, setting them up, but also tracking them and seeing whether or not you're getting success out of those referrals. Where are you putting it? What time of year are you putting it? How many people are you actually uh, you know, reaching out to in terms of your audience? I also think the other piece around word of mouth referral programs is when you think about social media, you have to think about where you sit in the spectrum of social media. Do you sit in the spectrum of hey, but Will, I only have like 100 followers for my hotel, like nobody wants to follow me. So is, it, is the goal to increase, engage, you know, increase followers or is the goal to increase engagement out of the followers that you currently have? And again, you're probably all sitting there going, but Will, I don't have time to have a social media person running around my hotel taking pictures and things like that. And, and that's okay. I think you just have to figure out where you sit on the spectrum of, uh, engagement around referrals, around friends and family promotions, things like that. Okay. Uh, Will, this question is for you. Um, Karen asks, can you explain a geo-based rate tactic? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'll give you an example. Just um, I'll give you an example in Hawaii that we ran for one of our hotels. Uh, so in Hawaii, we noticed that one of our independent hotels, right, we all have tools today, rate shopping tools, that when you raise your rates, 
all the brands around you will raise their rates as well. And then when you lower your rate, all the brands around you will do the same exact thing. And so what we did was we actually geofenced uh, rates around our hotel in Hawaii by a five mile radius. And then outside that five mile radius, we dropped the rate by 10%. So the rate shopping tools that the brands had actually raised their rates when our independent hotel raised their rate. And then for specific markets like feeder markets, like from Washington and from California, from Arizona, they actually had specific resident rates by IP address. Right, so somebody from Arizona is now search, search, searching Hawaii. They're now able to see a rate that's 10% lower than that. So the brands followed suit and raised rate. Our independent hotel lowered the rate to those given markets, and we're able to sweep in significant amount of bookings. So again, that's just like a Hawaiian example, but that could go for any market for that matter. It could be New York to Florida. It could be California. It could, you know, it could be Las Vegas uh, and having specific rates set up for California, for, for set up for, uh, for Arizona. So it's really around thinking about your source market, who they are. Uh, is it a last minute rate that you're trying to get them to maybe drive to your property? Uh, you know, you can drive in four hours to Las Vegas from Arizona, or is it uh, more of a, you know, fly approach or something like that? So that's how geo-based pricing works. It's really thinking about a specific rate to a specific city or state or country uh, that therefore by their IP address, we will then serve up that, uh, that unique rate. Okay. Uh, here's a question we received from both of you. Um, what suggestions do you have uh, for some examples and how you can create urgency to drive more bookings conversions? How about you, Will? You want to start with that, Rose? I'll let you go okay, first. Sorry. I'll be nice. Okay. <laughs> um, so sense of urgency to drive more bookings. Um, well, um, I believe, personally, you have to think about your business from a position of building right a, a it's got to be a balanced approach but b if you don't build a certain base of business and that base could be through group it could be through ota it could be through discounted channels wholesale channels it could be through putting promotions out there uh earlier on in the process to be able to build your base once you build your base for your hotel then you're able to then leverage the higher rates in the future so i think you know, each hotel is different in terms of their strategy on how they're going to be able to do this. But if you have a good base of business, then that will allow you to, you know, capitalize on the higher rates. The question is, is when you want to build that base of business, uh, whether it be able to have a seamless PMS to CRS to channel manager, right? You want to make sure that the rates and inventory and restrictions flow through those channels so that therefore whatever your strategy is, gets to all of the distribution channels, or if it's around putting a flexible price out there, you know, what channel do you want to put it on? What's the intent of putting it on that channel? And what is the expectation that we're setting for ourselves so that therefore when the results come in, we're, we're happy with those results and we believe that that worked. So um, hopefully that, that helps. One of my suggestions, and I work with a lot of hotels, is they've created banner urgencies on their booking engines, as Willis mentioned before. And what they do is they'll use the SkyTouch Rewards Program, book with us, save 10%, uh, get a bottle of water, free parking, whatever that message is to create that urgency. But they also tie their rewards program in with that incentive to book direct. Uh, that's one of my big suggestions. Thank you, Rose. Um, next, we have a bit of a, a bit of a more technical question, but will this is this would be great for you. This re, this is related to your discussion on having video on a hotel's website. Um, we have a question asking, you know, are there any ADA issues that you need to think about um, for accessibility if you're going to have video as a feature on your website? So there are ADA guidelines. There's no such thing as ADA compliance. So there are ADA guidelines for building a website. There's ADA guidelines for video. There's ADA guidelines for reservation booking engine, colors, look and feel, things like that. Um, and then you should consider whoever you're working with as your partner to make sure that they're helping you comply with those guidelines. Call it quarterly audits, things like that. 
Um, but yes, there absolutely are ADA guidelines as it relates to all of these products that you do need to consider. And, um, and we at TravelClick, we comply with those guidelines, but I will say that they are all ever changing and uh, auditing needs to you know, take place and all that good stuff. Um, another question um, regarding personalization. What are some ways that you, you can integrate personalization into your hotel website? Um, and what are some ways that you suggest of, of how you would target those people when they come to your website? Rose, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things when I look at hotels, and I always book direct, um, being a former travel agent, um, I like to see hotels' histories and stories. Again, bringing out the uniqueness of the property. I've also seen staff photographs, you know, and their experience. You know, make it kind of, uh, you know, interesting for someone to book and uniquely different, especially if there's a special restaurant or any a coffee shop. Um, again, I've seen separate tabs for this on websites. But again, you want it to look unique and inviting. Well, and what I'll, what I'll say, yeah, what I'll say about personalization is it all starts with data. There's a lot of data that you have on people today. It also starts with your CRM. What we're focused on is there's actually this new in 2020 when somebody comes to your website, the question is, are they known or unknown? Like, have they logged in and you know who they are and they've stayed with you before, or they stayed at one of your properties before and you know some data elements about them, or are they unknown and they're clicking around on your website, but you don't know who they are yet? If it's unknown, right, you have a little less flexibility, but you do learn things as that person, you know, clicks on call, call your golf packages page and they're searching around there. And then when they bounce, you want to be able to have an engine that sends them more personalization based off of golf and golf packages and come back into my golf experience. If they're known, then the question becomes is like, what variables do we have around that guest to be able to serve up dynamic content based off of what that guest is actually interested in? Um, and so, you know, that, those two concepts, I think, are going to become much more prevalent next year in terms of sort of te the technologies that you'll be able to see in the industry. Um, and then the other piece that I'll just mention about personalization and CRM content, you know, Facebook is, is an incredible engine based off of people's likes and interests and, and who they are and, and who they might be. And so we can actually, in our CRM, understand who your guest is who the most profitable guest is and what that profile of that person looks like. And you can then load that data into Facebook to, to go find lookalike modeling or go find more guests that look and feel and sound very similar to that person who's very profitable for your hotel. And so again, it kind of starts with who your guest data is and then being able to back channel through, you know, avenues like Facebook uh, or, or back through your media provider to then focus on sort of repeat customers from a personalized aspect. Hopefully that helps. Uh, it does. Thank you, Will. Um, well, I want to personally thank our presenters for joining us today. Um, if you didn't get a chance to get uh, your questions answered or if you want any further information, please feel free to reach out directly to uh, Rose Dorado at Skytouch Technology or William Dorado at